Hi, beautiful people. Welcome back. So we are going to do a recap and a review of The Real Housewives of Salt Lake City, Season 3, Episode 6, titled Fins to Fight. So here we have, in the first um, scene, we have Heather and her business partner, Dre. And they are looking at a space, you know, a venue space, because Heather lets us know that she wants to form a choir. She says, even though she has separated herself from the Mormon church, she misses the spirituality of church. And she said that the choir, when she was growing up in the church, was a big deal. And um, she just missed gathering with people and um, just being spiritual. So she is going to form a choir. So her business partner, um, Dre, joins her and so does a um, a former choir director, Corey. And I believe they're all on the same page. You know, they feel the same way. So they are getting it together. Corey is going to coordinate the audition process. Then she says within a couple of weeks, they should be rehearsing. So, you know, later on in the episode, we see where they have the audition process. So that was it for um, Heather and Dre. Now we have Jen and Coach Shaw, and they are going to like one of those sun, fun places, fun zone places where they have the bouncy house, they have the ball pit for adults and stuff like that. And Coach Shaw is taking Jen out on her date, her date night. And he just wanted to do something a little bit different. So instead of going to dinner and, um, you know, sitting down and probably, you know, the conversation would lead into, you know, serious things. He just wanted to have a fun night. So he chose to bring them to the fun zone. They had some fun, of course. But of course, Jen has to take it back to serious conversation. And she was keeping something from her husband, but she felt that, you know, now she needs to let him know. So she let him know that Angie Harrington's husband, Chris, started an, uh, an Instagram page a little while ago. And the purpose of the Instagram page was to bash Lisa. However, he titled the Instagram account Shaw Exposed. And um, she said she needed to talk to him to find out why he did that. Because most of the post on the page was about Lisa However, they use her name. I guess he used the name to to get for people to gain interest and to follow the account because it's at the same time when everything happened with Jen when she was arrested and now you know people were looking for information. So why not go to that page hoping that they would get some? So Coach Shaw listened to her for a little while, and um, he really didn't say much. You know, he just let her talk and let her vent. So we'll get to see further on down in the episode, you know, what that was about. So after that, now we see Lisa and her family at home. We see her and John talking and then we see Jack come in the room and she let Jack know that she received a letter from Jack's guidance counselor. Just wanting to know if they had the conversation with him about further education, because as you know, Jack is in his senior year of high school. He's getting ready to graduate and his mom already had the talk with him. Lisa already had the talk with him regarding college. And he basically told her that he don't need college because he already has a successful company. So she's following up with him again, you know, are you still feeling the same way? And then he goes in and he tells her like at the moment, yes, because he's seeing people on social media saying that you don't need college. You just need to get in there and make the money. But Lisa doesn't want that for him. She's like, she feels that he's skipping steps in life and that he really needs to get a college education. And then, of course, John is telling him, you're only looking at the stories that, you know, support your argument. What about the people who have actually gone to college? What are they saying? So Jack was like, um, you know, let me think about it some more. And then when I decide what I'm doing, I'll get back to you guys. So Jack basically told him, listen, I want to make my money as soon as possible. I don't want to have to his in his um, in his words. He doesn't want to waste time in college, but he just wants to get right into the workforce. He has the company that his dad and his mom helped him build. So he wants to just expand on that or build other companies. And that's where Jack is with it right now. He told his parents, I get back to you and let you know if I'm going to college or not. So maybe he's going to take a year off to figure things out. 
And then, um, you know, he'll decide to at least go get an associate's degree just to have a degree under his belt. So that was the talk with um, Lisa, uh, with Lisa, John and Jack. Now we have Whitney at home, Whitney and Justin are at home and you know, they go in, they're talking a little bit and then we find out that Justin was fired. So after we listen to their conversation a little bit, we find out that Justin was the sales and marketing officer for a publicly traded personal care product company. Whitney is thinking that um, Justin was fired because of the scene, they had a scene last season where they had got a little bit raunchy in their bedroom and it was filmed but i honestly don't think that's the reason why there is a conflict of interest here because i remember talking about my personal experience when i worked at uh, macy's i was a manager for macy's for quite some time and in our contract that we signed initially we were um explicitly told that you know working for a retail company you cannot go out there and also do the same thing that the company was doing. So, for instance, they were selling clothing, perfume, pots, pans, sheets, whatever. So, you as an employee for the company cannot start a business and do the same thing because that's being considered a competition. You're, you're taking the skills that you've learned from them and you're building on your own and eventually you would leave. So, I think that's what happened in Justin and Whitney's situation. Remember... Whitney has the, the, um, the personal products care line while Whitney rolls where she's selling face creams, um, serums and whatever. And these are kind of the same products that, um, Justin's company is actually, um, promoting or pushing or offering. And he is a sales and marketing officer. So why wouldn't Justin take the skills that he has learned from that company and apply it to his wife company? And, you know, if done over time, then, you know, she might be bigger than the company he's working for. So the company look at him like he's a risk. So therefore, you know, we need to separate. We need to part ways. And I'm sure that was in the contract that he signed initially. And um, I believe that's the real reason why they let him go. So to Whitney's point, she says, Justin has been working his whole life and nine to five. And for him to get terminated, it's a... um. It's a blow on his ego, as it would be if you've ever, you know, worked for a company and you feel that you were, you know, you are in good standing and all of a sudden, out of nowhere, you're told that your services are no longer needed. Of course, it's going to hurt. I mean, it's not even about the salary part of it. You know, you get up every day, you put your personal time into this, you actually care about it. And then all of a sudden you're told, oh, we no longer need you. Yes, he's going to feel a way. And if he's been working his whole life from he's been a teenager and has never been terminated, yes, when you leave, it's okay. You know, you, there's a different feeling when you um, tell the company that, listen, I'm leaving, rather than when they tell you, listen, we don't want you anymore. So, yes, Justin is going to feel a way. But I think after he gets not over it, but when he process it and get through it, he will use his skills that he's acquired over the years apply it to Whitney's company and her company is going to blow up. So yeah, I th Justin just needs to get through that part of it. But to Whitney's point, she said that her company at the moment does not make as much as Justin's income was, is bringing in. It's like, it's a big blow on their finances. She wants to know now if she needs to sell her purses in order to support the family. Yes, Whitney, you may have to. That's because that's why they call these purses an investment. So if you need to sell a, one or two of your Birkin or a couple of your Chanel's to pay your mortgage and to get through the time until Justin is able to get back on his feet, that's what you do for better or for worse. That's why you're married. So all the best to Justin and Whitney. I'm sure by now, since the filming of the show, that they've gone through this rough patch and they're doing a lot better. So, you know, they'll be okay. So now we are back at, um, we are with Heather and Dre again. So this time they're having a staff meeting. I did not know Heather had such a huge staff at Beauty Lab. There's a lot of people working there. So she, they're having a staff meeting and they are talking about the second location that they're supposed to be opening. They're saying it's running behind schedule. So I'm assuming that most of the people who are working at this current location, they're training and getting ready to move to a second location. 
but she says because it's taking so long for them to open the next um the next establishment or the other franchise and that the services that they're offering is in demand she like we're gonna have to run extended hours so she's basically telling her staff listen there's gonna be a couple of nights where some of you gotta work late and that's just how it is I mean, in this economy, you got a job, you got a job. So you just have to just adjust your schedule to do what you have to do. So that was the quick meeting with her and the staff. Um, she assured them that by next summer, that the next establishment will be open and then things could get back to normal. But by now, but for now, everybody's going to have to just um, tighten their belt and work through what's going on. So she goes in her office now and she's talking to Dre. And remember that Heather said she's getting ready to release a book. She's letting Dre know that, you know, the book is behind schedule. Her book agent has been calling her. He's telling her that he's made so many different excuses for her that he can't make any more excuses anymore. And, you know, the production company is considering just, you know, backing out of it. And the reason that she's saying that it's taken so long is based on the feelings she's have to think about the feelings of her um her family members she says um the tone of the book is also changing again and again at first she wants to put a soft tone on it and then she wants to come back and then put a hard tone on it and then she has to think about it about other people's feelings who she's going to be hurting with the release of the book so she's been dragging her feet on the book so we don't know if the book is really going to come out She also told um, Drea about, you know, Lisa talking to her on the ski trip about inviting Angie H. And then we get to find out there's a tit for tat between Lisa and Heather. So Lisa believes that um, Heather invited Angie H to the ski trip to get back at her because Lisa retweeted Heather's Heather's father's obituary. And um, she felt that that was kind of um, impersonal and she should not have done that because of this. it's her friend. So therefore, she's considered a friend. So therefore, she should not have done that. And um, Lisa is doubling down on the fact that um, some back and forth regarding the timeline of Heather's father's death. So she tells us that, you know, they took her dad from the hospital to come home to be in hospice until his passing. So I don't know if Lisa does not know the definition of hospice, but while dad was home, Lisa sent Heather a text and tell her, I hope your father is feeling better. If somebody tells you that their parent or family member is in hospice, know that they're just being kept comfortable until they're passing, until they move to the other side. That's what hospice is. So her sending that message to Heather, telling her, I hope your dad is feeling better, was just, I don't know. I guess she was trying to be a good friend, but she didn't think it through. So Heather is saying that um, Lisa sent her that message after her father has died. And Lisa is saying, no, he was still alive when I sent the message. So what are you saying? So that's why we come back to the fact that, you know, her... Her and Angie Harrington, Angie has started a rumor on Lisa. And then we have this as well with Heather inviting Angie to the ski trip where it's supposed to be for friends only. So Lisa and and, and, um, Heather have some beef behind the scenes as well. But they're going to have to work it out. I guess guess we're going to see how it works out down the line. Now we have Whitney and Lisa and they're going to a private yoga session. Great yoga session, by the way. And um, for Whitney, at least, because uh, Lisa kept asking, am I doing it right? Am I doing it right? And I think the yoga instructor was annoyed at her at one point. At one point, you see her open her eyes real wide, like, shut up. Let me just say what I'm saying. She kept um, praising Whitney on her poses as she just kept ignoring Lisa when Lisa was asking, am I doing it right? Yeah, she did answer, answer her a couple of times, but when it got to the point where she was being so annoying, She just ignored Lisa and focused on Whitney because Whitney was getting all the poses. So after they finished the session now, Lisa and Whitney, they're sitting there talking. And again, they're talking about her retweeting the obituary. And um, 
Whitney told her, you know, that was kind of out of line. That wasn't nice. That wasn't cute. You shouldn't have done that. So Lisa's like, I guess, you know, I really shouldn't, but I'm going to try to apologize to Heather by showing up to her choir audition. And if she kicked me out, she kicked me out. But that's how I'm going to try and talk to her and get through it. So that was the scene between Whitney and uh, Lisa. Now we have Meredith and Seth, and they're having dinner with Angie H. and her husband, Chris. Um, Angie H. says, no, uh, first, first Meredith says she, she kind of likes Angie H., but because Lisa was hogging Angie all to herself, she just let Lisa have Angie to herself. But now that they're on the out, she feels like she have an opportunity to get to know Angie and her family. So then Angie comes in a confessional and says that her and Meredith or um, connecting over a trauma bond from Lisa. They're both be going through stuff with Lisa. So, so they're both traumatized. So therefore we're doing a trauma bond. So they're talking about um, Lisa's attitude towards everything. She's saying that she would never had said anything like that about Lisa doing favors for, um, for basketball seats. She said the only thing she mentioned was that, that this particular person that Lisa supposedly got the basketball seeds from invested in Vita. And that was it. Also, Angie's husband, Chris, said the last time they went to a, a jazz game and he saw John. John was like, just get away from me. And he was like, really? This is how you feel about me? And John was like, yep, that's it. Just get away from me. So then, then Chris goes in and tells Seth and Meredith. I mean, while they're talking, Seth is just chomping away. And he's just like, I'm just here for the food. He's letting Meredith, you know, carry the conversation. And um, he's just eating his food. So then Chris admitted to opening a fake Instagram account. And he said, I don't know, you know, why a 52-year-old man would do that. I guess it's just um, juvenile of me or some word like that he used. And then, you know, it was a little bit of silence. And then it seemed like Meredith was like, okay, whatever. Yeah, you did it. So what? You know, Lisa has been kind of mean to all of us at one point. So if you open the account to get back at Lisa, I don't care. I'm like, wow. She didn't exactly say those words, but that was the gist of the attitude or the overall tone that I got from her reaction to that. They didn't tell him, no, that was wrong of you to do or anything. They're like, oh. Whatever, they just shrugged their shoulders and then they just kept on eating. So um, I think they made plans to meet up again and just to um, get together. But that was the gist of the dinner with Meredith and Seth. I guess Angie was trying to feel out to see how Meredith felt about the whole situation. So they got the thumbs up. They got the okay. They got the go ahead. If you want to do what you want to do to Lisa, we ain't got none. We... <laughs> If you want to do what you want to do to Lisa, we're fine with it. Just at least I am. Because like I said, Seth was just eating and he wasn't even saying anything. But he should have because John is a friend of his. So he should have had an opinion about it. I, In my opinion, Seth should have had something to say about that. But I guess he's like, I'm hungry. I'm eating. You guys deal with that. So that was the dinner between the two couples. Now we have Jen and Heather. And Heather comes over to Jen's house. And it's the, um, apparently there was a party the day before Jen had thrown a party for a five-year-old the day before. So she was still decorated. The theme was alien. So you have all the little alien balloons all over the place. You have the blow up alien and everything. So remember Jen hadn't told anybody about the account that, uh, Chris started. So now she's letting Heather know this is what happened. I didn't bring you into it because I know you guys are friends and I wanted to deal with it on my own. She said, I did call Chris and I asked him, why did you name the account Shot Exposed? And he said, oh, because it was available. So um, Jen asks, um, Heather asks Jen, so what are you going to do about it as far as, you know, them doing that to you? And then Jen flipped it right back on Heather. So what are you going to do about it? Because remember, this is Heather's friend. And GH is supposed to be good friends with Heather. And, um... Jen wants to know, are you going to continue being her friend? Or are you going to continue being my friend? That was basically what I got the gist of the conversation. So Heather kind of shrugged it off. She's like, you know, this is something that's, you know, 
in undefensible. Like you can't say you didn't do it because it's right there in black and white. So what are you going to do? So she said she would talk to Angie or something of that sort. But I don't think that um, she is going to lose Angie's friendship based on this situation that happened with Angie's husband. She's like, I've never known him to be any sort of vindictive person. So why would he do something like that? So she was trying to kind of defend him at the same time. But again, she's put in a hard place right now as their friend, as Jen's friend, as Angie's friend. Now Heather is in the middle again. She's been trying to get out of the middle of all of these people on their problems. But here she gets thrown right back into the center of a problem that she has nothing to do with. So now we have the day of the audition. We see everybody arrive. You know, Heather comes in. Her judges, she got quite a bit of judges. Then we go outside and we see the line of people waiting to audition. There's literally like seven people online. And to Jen's point, she said out of the seven, four of them are Heather's relatives. So what type of audition will this be? She comes in, she thinks she's going to be a judge. Jen does. She goes in and Heather lets her know that. No, similar to American Idol, remember, Chris, you, you're going to be the Ryan Seacrest and you're going to have Meredith as your assistant. Of course, they gave a little bit of pushback on that, but they finally gave in and like, you know, of course, Heather made it, you know, sweet. She's like, well, Ryan Seacrest is the star of American Idol and you don't see him behind the desk being a judge. And she was like, all right, all right, I'll take that. So her job now was to go outside, get the people ready to come inside and do their audition. So when she gets outside now, she sees Angie H, uh, Angie HK with Whitney. And she, in the confession, was like, what the heck is Angie H doing here? She doesn't belong here, blah, blah, she was going on. And that is where the episode ended. So we're going to continue the next episode with um, everyone doing the audition for Heather's Choir. And I guess we're going to get into some conversations because there is quite a few conversations to be had at this choir audition. So guys, I thank you for watching my video if you're watching this on youtube make sure that you like and subscribe to the channel and if you're listening to this on reality tv space with georgia denise podcast be sure to subscribe to the podcast and download the episode and until next time guys be sure to take care of yourselves and your family bye-bye